But if mm-hmm. MBO, if there was a Canadian winner in Montreal and a Canadian winner in Toronto, there would be just a, a be a rail parade <laughs> yeah. to and fro. We will be that a tennis massive. country. Yes. Forget the hockey. Yes. Forget the hockey. We're a tennis country. Yeah, yeah. Forget the hockey. The Toronto Maple Leafs first round losers. Felix Welcome to episode nine of North of the Net, a tennis show, a Canadian tennis show on the Slice Tennis Network. I'm Kareem Mustafa. As always, I'm joined by Brendan McCarthy and Stephen Bouton. Guys, how are we doing? I know, Stephen, you had a big week in Europe last week. Big week. Gestad, Swiss Open Gestad, up in the mountains here on the clay. It was a ton of fun. Got some good interviews, so you guys can see them on the Instagram. I've been playing uh, the most tennis I've ever played in my life. I think I've been playing since Wimbledon came to a close, more than the core four. Because uh, <laughs> a lot of them have been on vacation or rehabbing Perhaps. their respective yeah. injuries. So probably not that big of a stretch. Uh, unfortunately, I lost in one of my uh, respective doubles tournaments up here. Uh, not ideal, considering I was a finalist last year. So I was uh, a little uh, a little sour, but uh, I guess I got to work on my conditioning a little bit more. And uh, okay, you're joining the rest of the core four and losing early. So, <laughs> so it's the thing. To there do right you go, now. man. There you go. Sorry, sorry, guys. <laughs> Yikes. And- yeah, and I was kind of the opposite because I did go on vacation. So I was kind of away from the tennis world and the tennis playing for quite a bit. But I'm back. We're back. I'm very happy to be back doing this show. And we're going to get right into it because the City Open is three days away. It's very, very close. And we thought that Layla Fernandez might be playing in it, but it seems like that might not be possible. She just pulled out of Atlanta. It seems like her injury is not really progressing the way she wanted it to. Um, guys, what are your thoughts on this? Um, I thought, well, I saw her little video she made, you know, doing the the obligatory video. So, so sorry for pulling out. Like we just saw Nick Kyrgios do again. He's done it so many times, like minutes before going on court. He's like, you know, tough. Anyways, but Layla... She said she is, you know, listening to her doctors who I guess advised her not to play. I think she said this week. Mm-hmm. I couldn't tell if she said this week or in the coming weeks. Hope it's not the coming weeks, but I think she just meant this week. So she could, she, I don't see her on the entry list. Not that I can find like a final official one yet for the city open, but I don't see her on the entry list there. So my thought is either she might, you know, last minute show up to, you know, Washington, which who will obviously gladly take her um, or she'll just start her, hardcourt swing in toronto um at the national bank open which will be which will be sweet so yeah tough to, you know but i want her to wait i don't want her to rush it at all because mm-hmm. she's 19 and there's no there's just no point in rushing it so get yeah. get fully ready to go and then let it rock what do you think brendan yeah i mean at this point like atlanta's atlanta to lower tier tournaments and even the city open it's like don't don't push it i mean like get shade, ready. like brendan's throwing shade on the atl like, <laughs> well, atlanta, it's just atlanta. Like, <laughs> like you have to do the obligatory like hey guys like here's where i'm at like rehab's going well but not there yet but it's like yeah. you know i'm sure if like the u.s open for instance was not like, late <laughs> august early september she'd be like doc we got to move this along doc we gotta so help me with some of that rafa painkiller yeah we're, we're like, getting out <laughs> yeah so, like, just Please. at this point, get ready for the big dance. Like, don't worry about these little tournaments. Like, come on. Are we really going to be dialed in the city open as much as we are at Flushing Meadows? Like, <laughs> National Bank Open would be great. But even yeah. for I'm, – I'm sure I'm sure her trainer and – well, trainer slash father are going to be like – or, sorry, coach slash father yeah. is going to be like, look, it, just hold out for the slam. That's what we're – that's our goal. But, I mean, clearly, clearly, like, she really, like, did something horrible to her foot – uh, at Roland Garros and causing her to miss the entire grass court season. So it's going to be a pretty tough transition going from clay to hard. Um, but I mean, it's Layla, man. She's, uh, she's got a ton of courage. So I think, um, you gotta look, I mean, I'm a little biased considering. I I was going to say, I was going to say, you guys, this is a little bit of uh, foreshadowing here. I put some, I did. Yeah. I did put some, some future outright winner money on Layla to win at Flushing Meadows. (laughs) Um, Plus, uh, Brendan's got ulterior motives. So, yes, but also I wish her well in her recovery, but don't rush it back just for some lower tier tournaments. <laughs> oh yeah. my god, you you kill me. Uh, that's so funny. I can't I can't wait to roast you later into the show. That's, that's going to be very very fun. I already teed you up. 
We yeah. roast Brennan as Brennan roasts the City Open, where we'll never get a credential now because obviously everyone <laughs> watches our show. I'm just kidding. Um, um, but you said, uh, Stephen, you said Chapo is set to play the City Open. Yeah. So yes. what are we kind of expecting from him to do here? Because we know he's good on hard court as well. He's great on hardcore, and yeah, it couldn't. You can't. There's only one direction to go, as you know. You know, as as the one one of the all time great bands, One Direction. There's only one direction to go, <laughs> oh, and it's God. upwards for Shapovalov. Things uh, I did not see ter- coming. Terrible. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't really like. I don't really. Yeah, I don't really. I don't really like One D. You know, I'm not. I'm not a One D guy. But um, uh, clay swing, horrific end tragic grass season for shop valve like literally this might be his like what what, what would you call it i, w- I want to say like a mid-career crisis but he's like in the you know like a quarter career crisis like he's like in the early quarter of his career and i don't know what i don't know what's going on right now he has you know his friend is coaching him um pete polanski you know i said hi to him in geneva and he got the deets like he's his full-time coach but so far uh, other than beating rafa and now getting the rafa curse it's been tragic since then so I think he's hopefully had some good time off in the Bahamas. I've seen on his social media with his girlfriend and team. And uh, now he's ready to play. Yeah. Like you said, he's great on hard courts, grew up on hard courts in Canada. So, you know, I, you know, now that he's lower ranked, especially with losing the Wimbledon points from last year, dangerous early opponent for players. Um, And yeah, he could win. He could win the city open or he could, you know, go early, but we'll be back in our guy. Won't we? Yeah, he won't. he won't he won't be shoveling snow though, like in the Winnipeg Challengers, like you would like. It's true. <laughs> true. Yeah, uh, shout out to the Winnipeg Challenger, by the yeah. way. Good way to bring it up, Karina. Winnipeg Challenger for all you Canadian tennis fans. Maybe you're tuning into North of the Net from the barren um, plains of Manitoba. You Ooh. should make your way into the, the Manitoba or the what what is it? The Winnipeg Lawn Tennis Club, I think it is. Sounds very snooty. It's probably not. Um, right. and yeah, they got the challenger going on there this week. And it's great tennis, great homegrown tennis. We're roasting the city open. We're roasting Winnipeg. We're roasting players. I mean, well, I think I think Winnipeg's used to it. It's like they kind of always get roasted. But I think that's probably what makes them strong and, you know, probably a cool place to live. But what we're not going to roast is the National Bank Open in Toronto and Montreal. Um, I'm very excited for it. I know you guys are. Brendan and I will be, both be on the grounds in Toronto covering the tournament. So that's going to be super exciting. It's my first year covering it as media or like working as media and not going as a fan. So that's going to mm-hmm. be quite the experience because I've gone pretty much every year of my life almost <laughs> going as a fan to this tournament. So yeah, I'm very excited. The women are going to be in Toronto this year, which is nice. We're going to get some Bianca action. Hopefully Layla is going to be healthy in time yeah. to play. I assume she will be. It's in a couple of weeks. So she might want to get a tournament in before the U S open. And that's a good one to do it at home. Um, guys, how are we feeling about the women first in Toronto? Well, first, before Brennan goes, and I'm going to let Brennan talk, because he's actually going to be there. I just would like to express my jealousy of you two who are going to be oh, able yeah. to, like, right, like right. Karina said, be there in person on the ground with press credentials, which I'm very happy for. You know, you'll be flying the flag of the slice on the, on the grounds there. So I'm happy for you guys. And as you guys are both from Toronto, and I'm from out mm-hmm. west, so every time the National Bank Open happens, like I guess I've never even been. I've just watched it on TV. Like, what's the vibe in the city? Like, in, in, you know, in, you guys can speak for Toronto. Like, is it obvious that the tournament's there? Like if you're downtown, are you seeing like billboards of it or like, you know, advertising for it? Is there like kind of an energy or any type of buzz? It's yeah. In- it's interesting. Uh, yeah, Brendan, I'm like curious to hear your perspective on this. Yeah, no, it is. It's massive. Honestly, uh, when I was there in 2016 to watch Milos play just as a fan, I got last minute tickets and just the resounding response from from fans. Like I, I didn't realize, like, especially in, and this was at what now is, I think, the Sobeys Stadium. It was a, a, the Aviva Center before. Correct, yeah. Um, but, you know, this was l- late August. Like, you know, it's it's very much a, a, a hockey city in, in Toronto. And this, as for people to come out and, like, the the sheer passion I witnessed was great. And, and yes, Milos does actually have massive tree trunks um, in person. <laughs> that was pretty cool to witness. Um his performance, I, I believe he won that match. I think we saw an earlier on match of him, but it was it was really cool to witness. And that was 2016, and now uh, six years later, I'm actually going to be able to go as uh, a media member. So really, really cool. And uh, no, that the and all over the city too, Stephen. Like for, for just speaking for Karina and I, like it is it is massive. Like there's billboards everywhere. Cool. People get people get pretty zoned in. It's fun. Mm-hmm. cool and i and i will say like the canadians do show up like they show out oh, and, yeah. oh um, yeah 
I remember one year I was I was like kind of like it was the like opening weekends so like you can kind of go for free and roam the grounds wherever yeah. and it's like the qualifying matches and I was sitting in a match between Carson Branstein who's a Canadian tennis player and Mihaila Buzonescu who's a Romanian tennis player and mm-hmm. The crowd was like half Romanian, half Canadian, and they were kind of like going at each other because you would have the Romanians cheering for me <laughs> for Wizardescu, and then you'd have there was this I, I'll always remember this. There was this one kid sitting in the front row. Every time a Romanian would cheer, he would yell, "Come on, Carson!" <laughs> for the Canadian, oh my God. and it was Love just it, it was it. it was hilarious. It was so interesting to see like these two like countries kind of going at it each other in the same city i'm also excited karina that we'll probably get access to some of the eats there as uh as the media crew i don't want to like you know assume but you know (laughs) there might be a nice spread but cross my fingers here you can probably count on some meal tickets to check out the different vendors i'll tell you that but uh yeah i could use know i am i'm very jealous like i think you know there's probably a lot of like pent-up tennis energy in the city because of covid you know last oh, year yeah. they didn't have i don't think they had full there's definitely stands because a couple of my friends went in the toronto the men were in toronto last year but i think mm-hmm. they only had uh, fans in the main stadium right so yeah so the way that it worked last year was even in the like the center court it was only the 100s that were open like they didn't sell tickets higher oh okay yeah. which was actually it was nice in its own way because they were kind of it was affordable to sit that close oh, okay. much closer yeah, yeah. to the court which was pretty nice and yeah the other tournaments the other sorry the other arenas were like told the other courts were totally closed off like you could only go to send like you could not roam the grounds at all which was kind of crazy because that's kind of the biggest thing with this tournament is you can kind totally. of go wherever you want like all these different players are like i would go and see like venus williams like practicing on the court yeah but i couldn't do yeah. that last year you know so it was just it was a weird feeling no, that's what I mean. Like, yeah, the energy of just like, you know, fans wanting to have that full total Masters 1000 experience again, you know, they didn't have it last year. They didn't have it 2020. Um, so yeah, 2019 would have been the last time. So I think there's a lot of energy. I think it's going to be a great event for you guys. I'll be watching from far, cheering you on, you know, get it. We'll be collecting all the info and, and passing it on to you guys, the fans. Um, hopefully, if you're watching this from Canada, you can just be there. But I know it's, uh, you know, Canada is a big, you know, and here in Switzerland, if there's a tournament, everybody in Switzerland can just go. They just hop on the train, wait a few hours, and they're there. Canada, it's like, you know, the long flight, long and expensive flight from the West Coast out there. But if I think, you know, the tennis, the tennis hardcores make the pilgrimage every year, I think. Yeah. So, and yeah, even if you're in Toronto, you can jump on the train to Montreal to go see the men if you'd like as well. I know, like, it's sure. it's always big in both cities, like Toronto mm-hmm. and Montreal. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's going to be very fun, very exciting. I'm very excited for it. Um, but... It's going to be leading up to the U.S. Open, which I know we are all very excited about. I know Brenton has his very bold prediction about who is going to win the U.S. Open without any evidence to back it up so far. Well, I, I mean, I, do you want to? I guess we can't prop up the the wager slip, but I have I've effectively put down twenty on Layla to win outright. On I guess the finals would be September eleventh. She's plus yes. currently plus. 2200 to win and i think it'd be a great comeback story and i mean she was a finalist she was a finalist last year i think she's she's got the fire in her belly she's going to come back that's why i'm saying just wait it out just (laughs) wait it out for another couple of weeks and then come back and just absolutely tear up flushing meadows so it's not like it's i don't think it's i know a few times and you guys have posted to do our accounts where i've you know, got like curious over Joker, curious over Joker and you know, Wimbledon final. Like you probably felt there. pretty good there after the first set. Like I don't know, like you're probably. I felt good, and I had I had some some money left over after I did win some money thanks to Alina Rudikina. So I put that towards uh, Layla winning U.S. Open and the rest for the Toronto Argonauts to win this, the Grey Cup. Didn't mention <laughs> that, Karina. I don't know. That's that's that's. I mean. Obviously, the bombers are up there right now, but I also uh, I got to give love to my uh, to my Argonauts. So that's now the money is out. I've divided up the Ribikina earnings into Layla and the Argonauts. So let's see where a, it goes. A resident <laughs> degenerate gambler, Brendan, who's just like setting a terrible example for responsible. But I'm I do. Curious, I like, I I'm like curious to as to Canadians. like yeah, like I'm curious how like what were Bianca's odds? Because I feel like I have more confidence in her to win the U.S. Open I over think it was Layla. Two thousand. Like, what are Bianca's odds, like, right now? To win? Yeah. Like, were they better than Layla's? 
They were. I'll bring that up right now. I think they were better. Like I assume they were because I have yeah. more confidence in her too, and and she's kind of had more matches under her belt recently. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So I probably have her ahead in my like power rankings if we were gonna do power rankings for the U.S. Open. I'd probably have Bianca first, honestly. Well, is that and what we should maybe do? go. Yes. Felix Chapo. And Considering Layla. it's one of our. Yes, we should. <laughs> Bianca yeah. right now is like what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight on the eight on the odds list. She's yeah twenty one okay. to one. Okay, she could be um, a sneaky pick. Ryby Keen is only fifth on the money list. I'm like, that is interesting. Like that's that's some good value. I feel that like that there. is good know. value because she's even more powerful on hard. Fifteen court. to one for the person who just won the Wimbledon. <laughs> Wimbledon wow. Win. Wait, so who's first then? It goes Iga. Uh, okay. And then Naomi Osaka. Preposterous. This is points bet Canada, by the way. Um, Naomi Osaka, who hasn't won a match in like a year, it seems. Um, Simona Hall, it's fair. Coco Goff, right there, um, French Open finalist. But then Elena Rybakina, number five. I'm like, it's kind of crazy. But, you know, everyone's going to be allowed to play. All the Russians can play. Uh, so it's going to mm-hmm. be a lot more competitive tournament. So we'll see. Uh, Wimbledon was virtual asterisks. Not a real asterisk, but virtual asterisks. Um, anyways, My but, thing yeah. with Halep you- being that high is like, she does not have a good record at the U.S. Open. Something right. happens. She does really well the first, like, three quarters of the year. And then the U.S. Open hits. And she gets bounced in, like, the first or the second round, like, every year. I think last year, or I think it was last year where she went a little bit farther. But it's just, I never have any. Like, she was upset by Kaya Kanepi one year in the first round. Like, it's just always bad luck. So, like, yeah, I feel like Rubikina is a better pick. Maybe Bianca's a better pick here. Um I'm not one to bet yeah. against Simona Halep, but yeah. In terms of our Canadian, key? yeah, as in terms of our um, Canadian U.S. Open power rankings, I think I'm going to put Felix at the top. I know he uh, took a bit of a vacay break, but I think that dude is just seeding right now to get back after that um, pretty shocking opening round loss in yeah opening round loss in uh, in Wimbledon. Yeah. So I'm going to put him at number one. I'm going to skyrocket Layla to two. Love a good comeback story. Bianca at three, and I can't get a read on Chapel right now. Like he's 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 number four for me. You'll have a read after the city open. Okay, let's hope yeah. so. Let's I, hope. I, I, I mean, think you will. Some people would say he's unreadable, but uh, you know, you, you think you know you think you know what you're gonna get, and then he goes and makes the semifinals of Wimbledon. I don't know, but um, and Felix you know, will what? be at home, like in Montreal too. So he will be True. like at his like even more at home than just Canada in general. What if one of them wins the National Bank Open? Oh my gosh! I mean, Fireworks. Bianca did that. Fireworks. I know. Bian- that is, I, I'm like, I mean, I said this to Bianca when I interviewed her. I was like, do you ever forget that you won the U.S. Open? But I could also include it. Like, do you forget that you won Indian Wells and then the National Bank Open and then the U.S. Open? Like, arguably the National the Bank Open was it was so anticlimactic because Serena retired super early yeah. on, and then you yeah, know, I remember watching like, that. You kind of it's not the same, yeah. Yeah, but then she proved it at the U.S. Open that she could beat her, and so that was that was kind of nice. Yeah, a million percent. Yeah, that was that was insane. Karina, what would your what would your Canadian ratings be? Yeah, so I would go Bianca, Felix, Chapo, Layla, just because yeah. I think Bianca could probably go further. I think she's like building up momentum, and then I have confidence in Felix to do well on hard court. Um, it's just like with his like disappointing results lately. I'm like hoping to get a little bit of a comeback, and then I'm placing Chapo ahead of Layla just because I'm unsure where Layla is at with her injury right now. If she was healthy, I probably would have placed her ahead of Chapo, considering on how like results have gone this year. Mm. But I think Chapo is still a really good hardcore player. So we'll see. Mm. Mm-hmm. I'm conflicted. That's a good, I like, I'm, I'm kind of more on board with Karina there than I am with Brendan, but I would say <laughs> I actually would agree. It's like, I feel like the least risky move would be to put Felix as number one. Cause he's the highest ranked Canadian. So maybe I'll go Felix, Bianca, Chapo, Layla. And yeah, sorry, Layla. I know you're a big fan of the show, but it's just because you're injured. Um, so I would put her there because the injury, that's a question mark. Um, but I put all these players like very high. Like I feel like if they're all mm-hmm. healthy and playing well, they can all make, they, they all should make like quarters, like at least. Like that would be like, I feel like they might be disappointed with anything less than a quarters, each of them. Can you imagine yeah. having... Both Canadians like win on the men and the the women's side. 
of the U.S. Open? The sorry, the National Bank Open. We'd have okay. a parade. That would be, that would We'd be have cool. a parade. Oh yeah, on, no. On U.S. US, US Open is a little too far fetched. It's got to be. I gotta. I gotta aim low, a little bit lower. If they both won singles of the U.S. Open, it would officially be called the Canadian Open, and I would never call it anything. Other I think they do US call Open. it that. What the? Well, yeah, because Canadians always do well, or yeah. And there's so many that go down there, obviously, because it's cold. But yeah. But if MBO, if there was a Canadian winner in Montreal and a Canadian winner in Toronto, there would be just a, a be a rail parade. Yeah. To and fro. We will be that a tennis matter. country. Yes. Forget we'll the hockey. Yes. Forget the hockey. We're a tennis country. Yeah. yeah. Forget the hockey. The Toronto Maple Leafs first round losers. Like you know, we're we're, <laughs> we're tr- I'm sorry, but I'm joking. I was hard. I don't know why it's I said fine, that. Man. I'm, I'm, an, I'm, I'm sure. not joking. I'm an objective journalist. It's fine. You can rip it's, them all. Okay. Well, On I'm air, I'm right. objective, but when we're off, I'll I'll, uh, I'll give it to you. <laughs> Good. Um. No, but you know. I would love to see, you know, yeah, tennis. If they both win, tennis move up there to maybe like top three sports in Canada. Like, I don't, like I was trying to think of this. Like, it's obviously hockey is number one. Mm-hmm. And I, I honestly think like basketball is pretty up there. Yeah, in, in, I think in, ever uh, since the Raptors won the championship, I mean, ever since everyone sure. hopped on the bandwagon, are suddenly okay. Like, oh yeah, I've been a Raptors fan since two thousand one. It's like really, you weren't even born in two thousand. Do you like the litmus test? Is do you remember the pain of the TJ Ford and like Andre yes, years? Yes. Like if you don't, and if like you Mike weren't James watching those, then, yeah, of course, you don't. You're not. Brutal. You don't fit in. You're not a true fan. Um, Absolutely brutal. That was like horrific. Like it was like oh my gosh, you had to watch it. So yeah, it was, epi- this episode should just be called "We Are Roasting Canadians in Canada." <laughs> the roast. This is well, it's been a while. Canadian we haven't recorded sports. in a while. It has been a while. We have a lot of stuff up our chest. We're getting our angst out. Um, yes. which is good. Um, which I hope that the Canadians will do after all this catastrophic grass season. I hope they'll do that at yeah. the National Bank Open and in Cincinnati and at the U.S. Open. Um, but let's move, for the sake of time, on to Tweet of the Week. I know you guys found this yourself. Maybe who found it? I don't know. Whoever Brendan did. It can bring it's it all credit to Brendan. I did. This is the Iwaki brothers. They're eight and nine years old. Um, Steven will put up the video. It's yes. uh, His name is Yunusuke Iwaki, and he's firing backhand one hand backhands like he's like a mini Federer and he's doing it. Oh my gosh. He's literally slicing, slicing through butter and he is the length on his shots. And he's just, he's just got the art down, man. It's like, I've watched the video like a thousand times. It is like remarkable what kids under 10 can do with a racket. He is the exact, he has the exact takeaway of Richard Gasquet. And I know that because I've been watching Richard Gasquet the last two weeks play tennis. Not very well. He's been losing. But one of the greatest one-handed backhands of all time. And that kid just takes it back oh way up high. God. You know, juniors don't do that. They don't take it up high. They don't prepare well. They, like, you know, leave it to the last moment. And they're always late. This kid just, that's, yeah, it's in the same video. I can't believe it. That's a, it's a beautiful backhand. Follow yeah. him on Instagram at Owaki Brothers. You'll, you'll find him. The you have TT, also a very good pronunciation. Is... Sorry? Did you look up how to pronounce his name? Like, that sounds very, very well pronounced. I, uh, I, I didn't, but I'm kind of just, I, I guess I have good pronunciation. You know, it's okay. It's, it's like when I said laver instead of laver. It's fine. Yeah, that's true. Which uh, <laughs> the laver cup will be soon. I'll hopefully be going to that in London. And then it'll be in Vancouver next year, which we will be all over. Yes. It'll yes. be all over. Yes. It'll be One called minute. the Labor North of the Net Cup, basically. Yes. Um, anyways, that's a great tweet. That's a great tweet of the week. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. All of them. Yeah, it was oh. absolutely incredible. Um, that kid is better at tennis than any of us will ever be. Um, oh so I, I'm excited okay. to see this Okay. Future. I need to keep a little bit of my pride here. No, no, no. Bit. She's right. No. If I, if, on, I, lose, if I was no. to lose to one of the Owake brothers who's eight years old, I would – I have to seriously look at myself in the mirror. I don't care how nice that backhand looks. Dude, he's eight I years would old. Lose, like he's the, I would he's lose the height of the sh- net. I would lose in straight sets. Well, that's your problem. That's your problem, man. dude. That's your problem. Are you kidding me? Like these kids, these kids are incredible. I, I, I think. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm just gonna say this. Out of us three, I'm probably the strongest player, even though I haven't okay. met you guys uh in in person but i even like, gonna crush you now he's yeah. I'm like, i would say up. i'm at this point i haven't picked up a racket in three months but i'm probably like you know I, I used to play open tournaments out here in vancouver like i was like you know i was like definitely a hacker but like i, I you know i could swing a racket i had a nice i have a nice one hand backhand but i think i'm like a 4.5 player and there's just no way like eight-year-old kid is not the height of the net yet yeah, it'd be, be embarrassing, but he, he it effectively would. i have lost us. to like i've lost to like 13 14 year olds like i've done that like I, confession i've done it but they're yeah, like they're like, they like they have to be 13 then yeah they gotta be at least a teen like if it's not a teen like 
get out of here. Yeah. All right. All right. I'll, I'll cut us off here because it's going to get a little smart. too, That's a little smart. too fired up, a little too heated, but thank you. Thank you everyone for tuning into the show today. Make sure to follow the slice Hello. tennis on Instagram, sub to our YouTube channel, as well as our Twitter um, links are all in the description below. This has been North of the net on the slice tennis network. We'll see you all for our next episode. See ya. <laughs>